I would like to now give a short overview what we was learning during this 19 lesson course. Let's look to the first slide. This is a course overview chart and students taking this course will gain practical knowledge and experience to develop creativity, skills in applying design and composition principles and painting techniques for abstract, figurative and landscape painting. Students will learn about materials used to create an artwork, including painting surfaces and types of paints. Students learn basic principles and techniques for abstract, figurative and landscape painting. Students also develop skills in expressing their creative ideas more efficiently. Students also receive practical guidance for the use of line, shape and colour in art. Mm -hmm. We also learned how to arrange art elements, elements according to principles of design to create a harmonious composition. Students also learned how to improve their skills in drawing and painting and learn about contrast and visual effects. Students was also introduced to principles of perspective and their use in art, including how to paint images in the foreground, middle ground and background, while maintaining holistic composition. Students also learned about the relationship between light and form and how to apply these in a landscape composition, both in photography and painting. Students also learned how to create a focal point in order to express the dominant feeling in the work of art. We also learned how to evaluate our own artwork. Students also receive individual coaching based on their existing skill and knowledge. So this course, this course offers an overview and introduction to natural law-based principles of art, as brought to light by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and also described in an ancient Vedic literature. These are principles of art which lay in the basis of every artistic expression, whatever it is abstract, figurative or landscape painting. These are principles which guide artists to express <coughs> abstract reality of consciousness, abstract realities of life and laws of nature in a tangible form. These principles of art, as described by Vedic literature, arise within the symmetry and structure of our own consciousness. And they are related to the five basic elements of creation called Mahaputas. So let's take one example from the Vedic literature. Next slide, please. In Vastu Sutra Upanishad, it is written, vertical lines have the nature of fire, horizontal lines have the nature of water, diagonal lines have the nature of wind, with the different lines, the differences of characters of image arise. That form shines forth as determined by the lines, and the form becomes perfect. By depending on the essential lines, the soul of form becomes manifest, and also that of the presented image, represented image. So let's look a few examples. Next slide, please. So here we can see vertical lines have the nature of fire. Horizontal lines have the nature of water. And diagonal lines have the nature of wind. Students have received an overview of 20 different art principles. And these are principles which can guide every artist to express their full potential and creativity. Let's now look to the next slide. It is written in Vedic literature that art, the purpose of art is to 
enliven consciousness and spirituality in a viewer. And let's read this beautiful quote from Chitra Sutra. The concern of the artist should not be just faithfully reproduce the forms around him. The artist should try to look beyond the tangible world, the beauty of form that meets the eye. He should lift that veil and look within and look beyond the phenomenal world of separated beings and objects that blind the reality beyond. This quote beautifully expresses how art can enliven consciousness both in artist and the viewer. So let's look to the next slide. Here we can see how students also enjoyed overview of development of art over a long corridor of time, featuring greatest works of art in dif different stylistic periods. This course is taught in light of Maharishi Science of Consciousness and includes beautiful video recorded lectures of Maharishi speaking on art. Each, at each step of learning, the key principles of art are connected to the development of higher states of consciousness. In each lesson, students read their lesson summaries to the whole group and demonstrate it with an illustration. Next slide. All course participants receive book with main points for each lesson, Maharishi videos and handout with practical guidelines to continue developing their art skills at home. Art is evolutionary because it refines perception it expands awareness and it enriches environment. And this is beautifully expressed in a Vedic literature. Let's read this quote from Chitra Sutra. Of all arts, the best is Chitra, painting. It is conducive to dharma and has the virtue to liberate an individual from his limited confines. The purpose of art is to show one the grace that underlies all of creation to help one on the path towards reintegration with that which pervades the universe. Whatever it is established in home or elsewhere, a painting is harbinger of auspiciousness. A painting cleanses and curbs anxiety, augments further good, causes unequalled and pure delight, banishes the evils of bad dreams and pleases the household deity. The place decorated by a picture never looks dull or empty. Chitra Sutra 1.4 Next slide, please. Let's now look how artwork can influence both the artist and the viewer. When both the artist and the viewer's awareness are open to unboundedness, then synchrony is spontaneously channeled from artist to a viewer. Such communication is one of the central purpose of art. Only through a complete practical and theoretical understanding of the nature of Maharishi science of consciousness can the full value of art be expressed, enjoyed or realized. Next slide. We would especially like to express our deepest gratitude to His Holiness Maharishi Mahesh Yogi who has brought to light the profound knowledge of consciousness-based approach to art education for practical benefit of this generation and all generations to come. Thank you for the slide. I would also like to thank many other artists and art educators for their expertise, for helping and developing this beautiful art course. To conclude, I would like to read Marishi quote. Next slide, please. Every stroke of the artist has supplied a stroke of love, a tender feeling of love on that hard stone. The hardness of the stone melts into the fine impulses of love, and a peace radiates that. Such a piece of art tells the story of life and keeps on telling the story of life, the generations in the eternity of time. It is very vital that those future artists who stand to speak the achievements of their age for all time, be the pride of their generation, 
living such fullness of life, such artist will succeed in radiating that unboundedness within the boundaries of the art for all times to come. This is why it is called an art, Maharshi Mahesh Yogi. Jekode, thank you very much for these beautiful presentations. Just listen, listening to this presentation, one feels one really wanted to have participated in this beautiful course.